my friends. Welcome back to Frosty Eye Candy. And I'd love to give a big welcome to all of our new subscribers and our new watchers. Thank you so much for subscribing and your support. It means the world to me. And without that, I can't carry on doing what we're doing here. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And for all of those that are watching that aren't subscribers, I please, please just subscribe to our channel. YouTube only wants your email address and they won't bug you or hassle you. It's no big trouble. If you can subscribe, then you can comment and you can like on my videos and we can interact together. It will be great. So I'm now going to jump in. Excuse me for a second while I come over here. I'm going to in attempt to hold up the triptych. Here we go, my friends. So let me just show you the nice shimmers that the interference pigments are giving there. And we're going to focus on this one and how I made this one because it's exactly the same process, how I made the one in the middle and how I made this one here at the end. So I'm just going to stand back and just give you a little... There we go, friends. So there's the triptych, finished nicely and already resined. So how did I get to this? So then, let's run through some colours. <laughs> First off, to make the background of the actual vine part of the, of the uh, paw, we're using Enchantment. Now, this is a beautiful uh, semi-transparent pigment. It's this beautiful lilac colour that has this gorgeous kind of purpley, deeper flash to it. And then on top of the Enchantment, I'm then going to add Twinkle. You can see these two together look rather nicely. A little Twinkle. It's the Interference Blue-Violet from this little piggy. So we're gonna put those two down first and that's what gives us the really nice, uh, let me grab one. That's what gives us this really nice kind of border to the vine and really kind of sets it off nicely against the white satin background. So that's those two first. Then we add a little bit of the current favorite, the Rust-Oleum Metallics. Uh, this is the gold mine. So this is our tube paint that's now separated these two pigments from the next ones that we're about to put down, okay? And then the next ones to make the actual vine. I use this one from this little piggy. This one's called S'mores. Again, it's semi-transparent, so you can see the colors below it. And uh, is a beautiful uh, kind of representation of the actual uh, wood part of the vine. For me, anyway, that's how I see it. And then on top of the s'mores, we're going to be adding seaweed. Beautiful mid-green colour with a gorgeous gold flash to it. And on top of seaweed, we're going to add asparagus. This beautiful light green with a gold flash to it. So again, before we put our cell activator down, we want to put down a chew paint. So I mixed up some of this. And this is the Amsterdam Acrylics, the permanent blue-violet, I believe. Yes, permanent blue violet. So I lay just a little bit of that down before I add the CA to make the uh, to make the bloom vines of this Amsterdam acrylic, and this one is the Prussian blue. So that's what I do to actually make the vine parts right here. Okay, and now these colours are what makes the beautiful bloom. There we go. This way. Here we go. You just see the shimmers in there. It's gorgeous, even if I say so myself. The way uh, the colours for the actual bloom, again, it's the Rust-Oleum Gold Mine, uh, just a little tiny bit down first. And then it's a nice combo that I came up with of this little piggy and this one's Athena. Ooh, there we go, Athena. Gorgeous kind of dusty rose colour with a gold flash, just absolutely gorgeous. And as you can see, Athena is semi-transparent, so you're going to see the gold through Athena. And then I add just a very light little sprinkling of this one. It's the Light Thalo Blue by Golden, the heavy body acrylic. And this one's opaque as you see just there, right? And then I add another new favorite. They're all my favorites, really. Uh, this one is Supernova by uh, this little piggy. Fantastic kind of light, lovely pink color with a blue flash there. You can see it, the camera's picking it up. It's not hard, it's great. Uh, and this is, it doesn't say, but I'm guessing it really is another transparent or semi-transparent. And then lastly, we're going to use this for the bloom, and it's the Liquitex Fluorescent Opera Pink, the uh, gouache. And it's semi-opaque, as you can see right there. 
And what I did with this was I added a little bit of TLP Comet to it, just to give it an extra little kind of bit of a dazzle and a sparkle. And then we used, well, I used <laughs> the Prussian Blue as a cell activator. Okay, my friends, so that's enough of me talking about this. Uh, I would like to just mention to you guys that I start my new uh, acrylic weekly live show on a Sunday at one o'clock in the afternoon, Pacific Standard Time on YouTube, The Joy of Pouring with Cy Frost. I'd very much love you to join me uh, at that time. It would be great. And if you'd actually like to paint along with me, I can show you the paints that I'll be using really quickly. We're starting at the beginning, right for beginners. The Joy of Pouring starts right at the beginning. So we're gonna be doing some real simple pours and some open cup pours and some dirty pours. But the colors I'm using are the budget friendly acrylic from my local dollar store. We're gonna be using the black and the white. And then just quickly these colors, we're gonna be using Majestic Purple, Cobalt Blue, Sky Blue, Tropical Green, <laughs> Pumpkin Orange, Bright Red, and finally we're gonna be using Fuchsia Fun. Okay, so those are the paints we're gonna be using, the nice budget friendly from the dollar store, and we're gonna have a lot of fun on Sunday. Okay, my friends, that's it. I'm going to stop it, zip it, I'm going to get the camera pointing down, and we're going to get on with painting, okay? Okay, then, the first thing I guess I should say, guys, is that this part of the triptych is an 8-inch cradle. And that first lovely colour we're putting down here, that's the TLP twinkle. And you can see in the pattern I'm laying it down in because I want the vines to kind of come down the middle center of this cradle and then kind of go off all across the top so it marries in nicely with the next piece that I did. should also explain that I'd made this triptych in three separate pieces. They were too large to make together. Now this next color that I'm putting down friends, this is the TLP Enchantment. As you can see the glorious kind of purpley lavender color with a gorgeous blue flash to it. Really sits nicely on top of the twinkle. And as you can see from the beginning of the video, frames our vine, our vine absolutely beautifully. So this color that I'm putting down frames. Next one, it's going to be Goldmine by Rust-Oleum, the me metallic accents. And while we're just waiting for me to lay that colour down, I'd love to give a shout out to my group, Acrylic Pouring for Beginners on Facebook. I'd love to give a shout out to, of course, to the main man, Amu G, and the admins, Darren, Bridget, and Christy, along with myself. But I'd also love to give a shout out to Sheldon from Shell Rock Arts, Britta Clayton from Brit Clayton Designs, and Shannon from Shan B Designs. So that was the gold mine we just put down, my friends. Now this is the turn of s'mores by TLP. Beautiful, re beautiful, dark, rich chocolate color and very aptly named s'mores. And as I mentioned in the run through of the colors, this is the one that I kind of see as the wood part of the vine as such, or the darker center that we want. So this colour, here we go, is the turn of seaweed. And as you can tell guys, I'm laying less and less down each time because I don't want the last colours to overtake the piece. When we bloom it out, I want them to fade out nicely with that nice border of twinkle and enchantment. And here's the last TLP we're putting down, friends. This one is asparagus. Beautiful mid-green color, or light green color rather, with a gorgeous shimmer to it. Those TLP pigments sure do pack a punch. So here, as I mentioned, guys, this is the, uh, the dark uh, blue violet, permanent blue violet rather, by Amsterdam. This is our tube paint, so our cell activator we're about to put down doesn't sink immediately. And just positioning it a little, moving it down a bit. 
And if I'm not mistaken, I think I believe I do this blue vine in two halves. I do the vertical, then I do the horizontal. So as you can see, friends, I blow along and down the length of the cell activator and then gently out. So we get that nice spread of color and cell activator over the colors behind. Oh, not looking too bad. Let's do the vertical vine. We can always modify it later and make it more interesting. So again, you can see I blow along the length of the cell activator and then I blow it out over the colors. So while we're waiting for these delicious cells to pop up, I would love to tell you about my Facebook store. If you'd like to support me or help me out at all in any way, you can buy most of the pieces that you see in my videos are available. And of course, I'm always available to take commissions. Uh, so please follow the link on the bottom of my screen right now. That's the link to my Facebook store. And I'd be really grateful if you'd go take a look. So those cells are popping up nicely. And let's just add the next colors so we can have the bloom right in the middle there. So that was the little, little daub of Rust-Oleum gold mine. Now a little bit of the TLP Athena. Remember guys, we want to use a tiny amount really because we don't want this bloom to overtake. That was the golden light phthalo blue. And now this is the TLP Supernova, that beautiful pink blue interference. And the last one is the lovely fluorescent opera pink by Liquitex. And I put just a little bit of Comet in this one from TLP to zazz it up a little. So here we go. There's the cell activator, the Prussian blue cell activator. And let's cross our fingers for the blow. Excuse the back of my head momentarily. But there we go, guys. That's really all we need to blow out because we don't want the bloom to overtake the whole piece any more than that because it will grow when we spin it in a minute. <laughs> I'm a poet and I guess I didn't know it. <laughs> so while we're waiting for the cell activator to sink on the, on the bloom part of the vine, we're gonna modify the vine here. So I just gently grab the edges of some points and just drag them out and I think they make a more pleasing kind of leaf shape or at least maybe the tendrils that would be coming off a vine grasping for more places to secure itself I guess and climb. I'm waffling now, I'm going to stop this and we're going to watch me do some modifications. As we can see, the cell activator is sinking really nicely in the bloom, in the flower part of the vine. And then we go for some modifications here. I was so fortunate with how this one came out. Just four very simple modifications, dragging just the top layers of paint into the center, making sure not to go to the pillow, white pillow below. Yeah, it's okay, but you do run the risk of bringing some white up into the middle of the bloom. And we really don't want that if we can't help it. But there you go. A few simple modifications and we really have a beautiful flower forming now. I say it every time, but I really couldn't have asked it to come out any better for a tutorial video. So the last few little modifications for the vines and we're going to get ready to spin her out. The trick with modifications is knowing where to do them and when to do them, but more importantly, when to stop doing them. <laughs> we can over modify a piece and get to the point of almost wrecking it, I guess. And we always wonder what would have been if we'd left it alone and walked away.
So I'm just wetting the edges of the canvas here, friends. You know this trick, but for friends and for new watchers, new to the channel and new to my videos, this is called wetting the edge of the canvas or the cradle, whatever you're actually pouring on. You take a little bit of the pillow paint as you see me there, the white, and you just make sure the edge of the canvas has a nice coating of paint. This will help when you spin the piece to allow the paint to really nicely just move to the edge and flow over the edge and down of the canvas and hopefully retaining some cells and details and interesting bits to the edge. Oh, last couple of little blow modifications <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we're gonna get spinning. Just making sure the piece is nicely composed where I want it and then we go for a spin. And again, I know I say this every time, but for those watching for the first time, I leave my videos the spinning in real time so you can see how long and how fast I span for. I work in my kitchen, so I have limited space and I have to be clean to make sure not to get paint everywhere. And this spinning of my pieces enables me just to catch all the excess paint on the board, as you can see there, and hardly anything ends up on the floor or the fridge or the cat. <laughs> But there you go, my friends. That's a nice little 360 spin. Just moving the piece over a little bit and also giving the, the interference piggies and color shift piggies a chance to shine. And one last spin. And in we go for a super close up. So as it says on the bottom of the screen, friends, please don't forget to subscribe. I would greatly, greatly appreciate you to subscribe. It doesn't take a lot. It's just an email address they want. And uh, your subscriptions mean a lot to me in helping me grow the channel. But here we go, friends, for the nice final little close up. Look at those piggies singing there in the vine and then in the bloom. Absolutely wonderful. So thank you for joining me, my friends. Please like and subscribe. And as always, happy pouring.